And so this communion Sunday, Jesus, he gives us a powerful word for the believer on this communion Sunday, amen? Uh, kingdom prerequisite, amen? And, and a prerequisite is something that, that is, uh, is, is necessary in order for something, in order for something to be carried out at a certain time or a certain function, amen? It's a prerequisite. Amen. For example, amen, to get a to get a million dollar life insurance policy before they give you a policy, they ask you to take a physical. That's a prerequisite. Amen. They want you to take a physical because they want to make sure before that you're healthy before they go ahead and insure you. Amen. That is a prerequisite. And so Jesus gives us on this communion Sunday a prerequisite in order to have a relationship with him. In order for us to have a relationship with him, amen, he gives a, a, a prerequisite. In order to have a relationship with the king, amen, that one day we may live in his kingdom, there's a prerequisite, amen. And we want to look at that this morning. I want you to turn your Bibles on this Sunday morning, and I want you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew. And in the Gospel of Matthew, amen, we have a prerequisite. That Jesus gives, amen. Man don't give this, amen. Pastor don't give this. But Jesus, the king of glory, he gives this, a prerequisite, amen. And in Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 34 through 40, we want to hear what Jesus says, amen. We want to hear what does Jesus say. And so watch this, listen to this, turn your Bibles, make sure that on Sunday, watch this, you grab your word, amen, to make sure that what I'm telling you comes straight from the book, amen. You make sure, amen. So grab your word on Sunday, amen. Hearing this, watch this, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. The Pharisees got together and one of them, an expert in the law tested him with this question. Look at the test. I'm trying to test the Lord. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Listen to what Jesus says. And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Hallelujah. On this communion Sunday, amen, as we reflect on the goodness of the Lord, we reflect on all that he has done for us, made a way for us, loved us when we didn't even love ourselves. Amen. The Lord has been good to us. On this communion Sunday, let's, let's preach the sermon topic. The prerequisite is still on the table church <laughs> you must love the Lord let's go back to some simple teaching watch this uh, it is still commanded that you and I love Jesus that we must love the Lord amen we don't talk about that much about that that much but we must love the Lord that is a kingdom prerequisite that we love the Lord amen don't miss this uh, a love for God is still a prerequisite to one day living with the king. Please don't miss this. Don't get this thing twisted. You got to love the Lord. Amen. You have to love the Lord. If you want to if you want to reign with him. Amen. One day you can't reign with him if you don't love him. Can I get a witness up in here today? And so as believers, uh, he said that we are to love him. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God. That's the greatest commandment. And so we want to take time and put our foot on this because we want to look at this love, a prerequisite, a kingdom prerequisite. Amen. You can't have church. Say that I love church, but I don't love Jesus. Amen. You can't talk about I love people, but you don't love Jesus. Amen. The prerequisite for the child of God is that we love the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you and honor you and worship you and bow before you and and lord god we ask this day that you would cleanse us and that you would forgive us of all sin father god we realize that we fall short of your glory we realize that we at times miss the mark but we also realize that you are a forgiving god that you are a god that that takes our sin oh god and you have already cast it already 
into the sea of forgiveness as far as the east is from the west. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for loving us with an everlasting love, oh God. And we pray, Lord God, to today that by the power of your spirit that you would open up our hearts to receive truth, that we would truly love you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, and with all of our souls. Strengthen us in this area, Lord God. Build us up in this area that at times we fall short. Now give us, oh God, a rhema word for the believer, Lord God. Now sanctify us in your word because your word alone, oh God, my master, is true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The prerequisite huh, is still on the table. You must love the Lord. You got to love the Lord. Amen. Let me start. Let me, let me set this text up. Let me set it up. The, the surrounding text that Jesus commands. And let's set this up. Uh, this starts off as a test from some of the religious teachers. Amen. They want to test Jesus. Amen. And I, and I want you to listen, saints, as we set this scenario. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday in this text. It's Wednesday. And it is the Passover week. It's the Passion Week, amen? It, it, it's, watch this, it's Easter week when Jesus makes this great proclamation. And this is right before Friday when, when, when Jesus, watch this, go to the cross to be crucified for the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Communion Sunday, amen? And this is that time. And Jesus, watch this, is in the temple. Walk with me. He's, he's in the temple on Monday. They hailed him on Sunday and Monday, uh, hail to the king, amen? Uh, and in, and, but then on Tuesday, he's in the temple throwing out some hucksters. There's always some hucksters around the, the temple, always some hucksters around the church, amen? He's throwing out hucksters and, and money changers and swindlers. That's what he's doing on Tuesday. Walk with me this morning. And now in the text that we read, it's Wednesday. And, and last night, Tuesday night, uh, Jesus, he chilled. He was chilling over, over his friend's house, over uh, Mary Martha's and their brother Lazarus' house last night. Amen. You know Lazarus, the one that Jesus raised from the dead. Y'all remember, amen? A, 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 but this is Wednesday. And now Jesus is back in the temple. And he's in the temple teaching, preaching about the kingdom. And, 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 and here we go, here we go. And, and, and the religious teachers, they hated him. The religious teachers, they, 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 they hated him and they resented him. And they wanted him gone. Because what he taught, hold on to this, Rooted, because what he taught was truth. Amen? And it, watch this, it, it contradicted their teaching, it, it contradicted their ideology. Watch this. It contradicted their belief system. It threatened their position of power and lifestyle. And we see all of that in chapter 22 of, of this book of Matthew. All of that's in chapter 22. We see it. And they're trying their best to discredit Jesus by running him through a series of tests, trick questions. Amen. You know how people are. You know how people are, amen? Uh, can I get an amen up in here? Watch this. And watch this. In, in chapter 22 and verse 15, the first thing we see is that they, they come to Jesus with a political test. And they ask Jesus, the first he's come with the Herodians, and they asked him about paying taxes. They come to the Son of God, and, and they asked him about paying taxes to Caesar, trying to get him in trouble with the Roman IRS. And Jesus tells them in the text, he says, he says, what belongs to Caesar? Come on, Jesus. You give to Caesar. But what belongs to God? You give to God. <laughs> uh, cool. <laughs> but then they come back in verse 23, and they come with another test, and, and they come with a theological question, try, trying to trick Jesus. Amen? And they came and they asked him in the text, they say in the religious group that came in, the Sadducees, and they asked him, uh, referring to the resurrection. They said, if a man dies, teacher, and he dies without children, and, and the, the wife that he was married to marries his brother, according to Israel Mosaic law and all that, right? Marries his brother. 
But then he dies, no children. Then, and then she goes to all the brothers. Sister goes to all the brothers. All the brothers die. They asked him, they said, uh, in heaven, whose wife will she be? It's in verse 23. And Jesus tells them, he, he, he tells them this. He, he lets them know that, 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 that at the resurrection, Jesus tells them, there will be no giving of marriage. There won't be no husbands and wives when we get over in glory. Amen. We'll be brothers and sisters because marriage is only illustrated for the earth. Can I get an amen? Cool, 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 Jesus. Cool. But here we go, church. Now we're in verse 34, our preaching text. We're down in verse 34, our preaching text, and the experts of the law, the religious folks, there's always some religious folks around. Amen. The religious folks, they asked him, uh, Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? Trying to trick him. Uh, uh, and now they come to Jesus with a spiritual test. They came with a political test. They came with a theological test. But now they come with a spiritual test. And, and, and look at Jesus. Get this. Uh, we got you now, Jesus. Watch Jesus. Check out Jesus. He takes them straight to what they're familiar with. Sometimes you got to take um, um, religious folks to what they're familiar to. Amen. He takes them right to what they're familiar to, and he takes them to the, to the Shama. He takes them to the Mosaic law. He takes them to what they know. See, see, they know Bible. <laughs> they know uh, ceremonies. And so he takes them to the Shama. And in the Shama in Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 9, it says, Hear, O Israel. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be in your hearts. And impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols. Keep this before you. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead and write them on the door frames of your house. He says, he says, he says, see the, see the Jewish people, they understood. They quoted this daily. They raised their children up on this great truth. Amen. They posted it on their door frames of their homes. And Jesus, get this, get this. Jesus, the command, he takes them from an external, just on the outward, showy thing of this love of God. And he takes them into the internal, into the inside. Watch this. Jesus goes from an outward manifestation, and now he says, guess what? This love of God got to be where? In your heart. This love of God got to be in your heart. Amen. See, the religious folks, as we got today in the 21st century, we got a lot of religious folks. We got folks that, that, that love good preaching. We got folks that love going to church and having church. We got, we got folks that love good soulful gospel music. Amen. They love to hear that. We got folks that love to hear how God will bless you and your inheritance and how great you can be. Amen. We got folks that love all of that. But the question on the floor, the prerequisite is still on the table. Jesus asked them, do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord thy God? And then he rocks them. He rocks them just like he rocks us. Amen. Because he says all the Mosaic law hangs on this, you religious folks. All the Mosaic law hangs on these two principles. Watch this. See, see, you can't love your neighbor until you first love God. Can I get a witness up in here? The world talking about let's love one another, but watch this. You can't love nobody until you first love God. I'm talking about a real love. I ain't talking about a Soto love. I ain't talking about a worldly love. I'm talking about a love of God. See, the first thing is that we must love the Lord on this communion Sunday. We got to love the Lord. Amen. See, you got to love the Lord more than you love church, more than you love gospel music, more than you love helping people. What is all that if you don't love the Lord? What is all that putting something in the offering plate if you don't love Jesus? What is all that? I want to I wanna do ministry, but you don't love the Lord. He says the greatest commandment on this um, communion Sunday is that we love him. You got to love him. You got to love the Lord. Amen. 
And, and he gives us the litmus test. There's a litmus test. And, and the litmus test to prove you love God, watch this. See, to prove that you love God, watch this. If you love God, hold on to your seats. You want to love his son. Watch this. Get away from all this. I love God. Watch this. If you love the true and living God, the almighty God, the alpha and the omega, watch this. You will love his son. You will love Jesus. Amen. Look at the litmus test. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. He's dealing with these religious leaders. Amen. He's dealing with these folks that love religion. He's dealing with these folks that got a, a, a church talk and, and, and a pious talk about their love of God. But now Jesus is going into the heart. He says, if you, if you, if, if you were of my father, you would love me. For I've come here from God. And I have not come on my own. God sent me. Watch this. The litmus test, brothers and sisters is that if you love God, you're going to love the one that he sent. You're going to love the only redeemer for mankind, and that is his son, Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness today? The, the prerequisite on this communion Sunday, the prerequisite is still on the table. We must love the Lord. We got to love the Lord, amen? We got to love him. Walk with me today. Listen, church, listen. Loving God is still the prerequisite. In order to have a relationship with him, you have to love him. Amen? See, one thing about religious folks, amen, they're relying on formulas. They're relying on ceremonies. See, but true love for God, walk with me, goes beyond formulas. It goes beyond ceremonies. See, see salvation is, is not a formula. It's not a formula. Will you say the right words? No, no, it's not a formula that you say a certain prayer. It's not a formula that you deny yourself, that you recite uh, uh, these truths over and over again. But no, what God expe expects is that we love him. God says, I want you to love me. Amen. That's the greatest commandment, is that you love me, that you love me. Amen. Check it out, saints. See, as I look at this and understand this, Amen. We can, get, we can get caught up in formulas and ceremonies and all that stuff is spiritually dead. Amen. Watch this. You got to love the Lord. You got to love the Lord word, not just on the outward. You got to love him on the inward. You got to love him just because of who he is. You got to love him because he is the alpha, the omega. He's the creator. He's a sustainer. You got to love him. Watch this. Because he first loved you. Hallelujah, the prerequisite that's on the table, rooted Bible. The prerequisite, watch this, all the churching and all the giving and all the ministry, that's good stuff. We got to do that. But the prerequisite, watch this, is that you and I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Watch this. Let me, let me give you some truth here. Check it out, saints. God makes covenants. I want you to walk with me today because we're in a new year. And watch this, we want to walk in this new year, watch this, we want to walk in this new year loving the Lord. I don't want to walk in this new year with, with a pandemic hanging over top of me and, and, and all the drear of this world, no. I want to walk in this new year loving the Lord Jesus in my heart, amen? And God makes covenant with those who love him. Did you know that? Did you know that God makes a covenant? He makes an agreement. God does a contract. He makes an, a, a, a contract that can't be broken, a, a contract that can't be gnawed, a contract that stays intact with those who love him. Look what it says here. Look what it says in Nehemiah. In Nehemiah, he says here, he says, then I said, Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him, and keep his commands. Did you see that? Watch this. Watch this rooted Bible. God says, when you love me, watch this. I got a covenant with you. I got a covenant that even the devil and all of his demons can't break. Watch this. I got a covenant with you that even your sin can't break. Amen. When I make my covenant with you, it's an everlasting covenant. See, because guess what? I'm a promise keeping God. I'm an everlasting God. I'm an unchanging God. Watch this. I'm not like your homeboys and your homegirls who tell you one thing and do something else. Now, 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 sweetheart. I'm the God who never changes. If I say I'm going to do it, then guess what? It's already done can I get a witness up in here hallelujah and he makes a covenant he makes a covenant with those who love him 
Don't you grow weary. You better know that God loves you. Amen. Don't you let the devil whisper in your ear. Amen. You better know that the, that the Lord loves you. And not only does he love you, watch this, he likes you. Hallelujah. But watch this, as we look at this, uh, there's loving God through Jesus Christ. It's a serious thing. See, see, loving God is a serious thing. And because watch this, there's only two groups of people in the world. I mean, let me, let me, let me, let me grow you up. Let me strengthen you because we got a lot of liberal uh, saints, a lot of liberal Christians. Amen. Watch this. I want you to get strong. Amen. There's only two groups in the world. There's only two groups. It is those who love God and those who hate God. That's it. See, either you love him or you hate him. There's no neutral ground. There's no middle ground. You say, well, pastor, where you, where you get that from? Hold on to your seat. Hold on to your seat. Uh, those who love the Lord or those who hate the Lord, God himself recognizes it. Look what God says in the book of Exodus. Look what he says in the law. He says, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. Talking about idols. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Look at the Lord. He's jealous. He's a jealous God. Watch this. Punishing, punishing. See, we forget that God still punishes sin. We forget all about that. We don't want to preach that. We don't want to preach that on YouTube and, and over the internet. That God still punishes sin. I'm going to tell you that right now. Watch this. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Watch this. Look what, the, look what it says about to those who hate me. Huh? To those who hate me. Watch this. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me. And watch this. And if you love me, we're going to get to this. If you love me, it's going to go beyond your words. You want to keep my commandments. Oh, we're walking today. We're talking about the prerequisite that's still on the table. Watch this, brothers and sisters. It's that we must love the Lord. That's still the prerequisite on the table. That we must love the Lord. You, the, uh, let's answer this question. What does it mean to love God? And, and we could sp spend the entire week trying to explain this. But let me try to put it in a nutshell, a surveyed look. What what? What does it mean to love God? Let me just try to explain this in my little, in my little mind, amen, in my little, in my little finite mind. Let's, let's try to wrap our minds about loving God, amen? And what does it mean? And, and, and as we look at this, watch this, uh, when we talk about this, the Bible talks about love, and it, and it primarily means this. It's a love that keeps on loving. See, when the Bible talks about love, it talks about a love that keeps on loving, a love that comes with commitment, a love that demonstrates action, a love that, ha watch this, a love with no action isn't love at all. See, see, let me say something. Let me take a sidebar to the young sisters. Amen. That dude telling you how much he loves you, uh, that you all of that in a bag of chips, <laughs> That you, that, you are, that you are the apple of his eye and that he loves you. Watch this. Now, since you love me, put it in action. See, because love has action to it. it watch this. If you love me, put a roof over top of my head. If you love me, make sure that these bills are paid. If you love me, make sure that I'm covered. If you love me, watch this. Watch over my emotions. And If you love me, build into my life. Because love has action. More than just saying, baby, I love you. Can I get an amen this morning? And so we see the word uh, agape or agapo. And it's a love of commitment. And that's what the love of God is. It's a love of commitment into action. See, love that's committed is a love that moves into action. You say, Pastor, where you get that? For, for the Bible says. For God demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. You know, do you understand what it says? Watch this. It says that God says, I went beyond telling you, um, Pastor Webster, that I love you. When you was a sinner on your way to a burning hell, you remember back then, when my name wasn't even on your lips, I was loving you. 
And my action of my love went into motion the day that I now moved into your dark heart and opened up your blind eyes and put you on straight street. You remember that day when I called your name and I turned you around and I moved you towards redemption? Do you remember that day? Why? Because I love you. Does anybody in the house right now recognize that the love of God was demonstrated in your life? Watch this. It wasn't you who came to the Lord. It wasn't you who was seeking God. But God's love went into action and God brought you out of the darkness and God brought you out of the Maori clay and God brought you out, hallelujah, to bring you into his family. That's why we praise him. That's why some people say, you're so fanatic, all you do is talk about church and, and Jesus. What else is there to talk about? When you've been brought with a price, when you know you got eternal life, what else is there to talk about? And we see here that a gospel is a love of action. It's a love that moves, amen. And, 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 and the love of God, it, it comes, amen. You may say, but I got a, full, a warm feeling of gratitude that comes over me when I think about all that Jesus has done for me. In my heart, I feel warm all over. Well, let me, I don't want to mess up your warmness, but God ain't worrying about your warmness. He's worrying about your unwavering, your unmovable, your sacrificial, your die to self, your deliberate act of a will of your commitment towards him. See, he wants you now because of what he's done for us. He wants it now to be moved into action. And you're not saved by works, but because he saved you. He deserves all that we could bring to him. Can I get a witness up in here? So as we look at this, we see, watch this. Uh, we see that the love of God consist of all these things the love of god consists of intelligence and purpose it's a love that engages and it's a love that energizes it's a love watch this that attaches itself walk with me this morning it attaches itself to our hearts yes it does listen listen brothers and sisters this is a deep truth it's in the heart that everything starts. It's in your heart that everything starts, amen? It's in the heart, the heart gives life. You gotta walk with me today. That's why the Lord wants it. Because out of the heart, everything has its being. Out of the heart, you operate and you move. Out of the heart is your soul and your emotions out of the heart. That's why the Lord wants our heart. Because out of the heart, everything comes out of, amen? Look what it says here. Look what it says here in Proverbs, the heart gives life. And above all else, God, our hearts. For everything you do flows from it. That's why the Lord wants our heart, because everything flows out of our heart. You got to listen, listen well, church. Understand what I'm saying. Everything, the heart is the place where we, where we think. It's the heart is the place that we feel emotions. It makes choices. The heart produces every action and everything. And that's why... That is why we got to guard it, and that's why God wants it. God says, I want your heart. I, that's the website. I want your heart. First Lady, I want your heart. Minister Rufus, I want your heart. Deacon Gregory, I want your heart. I want your heart because out of your heart is where everything comes. Amen. And God says, I want your heart. And he, he has a right to demand our heart. Why? Because he created us. Amen. The great 18th century preacher by the name of Charles Spurgeon, amen, he wrote, he wrote, with all your heart means intensity, with all your soul means sincerity and lovingly, and with all your strength means with all of your energy, your faculty, and every possibility of your nature. What am I saying this morning? I'm saying that God says, I want all of you. That's love. What am I saying this morning? The prerequisite. Watch this. You got to love the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we have to love the Lord. Amen. We got to love the Lord. Amen. And, and Jesus is saying in the text as he's dealing with these Pharisees and he gives them the commandment to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. In another translation, it says with all your strength. Amen. Jesus is essentially saying in the text. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, love me. With the core of your identity. <laughs> That's some deep stuff. Jesus says, love me, love, because I'm God. 
all by myself. Love me. Love me with the core of your identity. Love me with your love of purpose. Love me with your love of intellect. Love me with your love of desire. Love me with your love of emotions. Love me with your love of worship. Love me with your love of dedication. Love me with the strength that you have every day to carry out all the tasks that you do. Watch this. Love me with your strength. The Lord wants more than us just to believe. We got some folks that believe and recite some facts. God says, I don't need you to keep reciting facts about who I am. I don't need you just to know about who I am. He says, watch this. The demons know that. See, watch this. The demons know I'm omnipotent. The demons know I'm omniscient, all-knowing. The demons know I'm the God from everlasting to everlasting. They know all this. I don't need your facts. I don't need you, you to reciting some facts of who I am. No, no, no. I need a little bit more than that. No, I need more than that. See, what James says that the demons believe. Look what it says in James 2.19. You believe that there is one God good. Even the demons believe that. See, the demons know who God is. They know who God is, but watch this. They know who God is. They know that he is Alpha. They know that he's Omega. Watch this. Hold up. Hold up. They know that he is God from everlasting. Watch this. The demons and Satan know, watch this, that he's a creator. They all know this. They know the facts of who God is. We got some folks that know facts. We got some folks that was raised up in church and they know the facts about God. But one thing about the demons, the demons don't love God. They don't love God, and God requires a prerequisite that we love him. They don't love God, amen, and, and, and we love him, amen, and so we are to love him. See, loving Jesus with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul and strength, you know what it does when we love him like that? That's what it does, rooted. It puts him back on the throne. The Lord wants to be on the throne of our lives. It put him back on the throne of our lives, amen? Uh, and, and we have to understand this. And so watch this. It puts him back on the throne of everything that we do. And so watch this. We don't go days without thinking about him. We don't go hours. I don't even go an hour without thinking about something about the Lord. Amen. We don't go weeks without thinking about the Lord. Why? Because he's seated on the throne. And if he's seated on the throne, he's in the center of my mind. He's in the center of my emotions. He's in the center of my strength. When you go to work every day, you better be thanking the Lord that he woke you up and he started you on your way. When you're able to think through difficult situations, you better be thankful that the Lord is the one who's a mind regulator, amen, you better be thankful that God has all the power and he is seated on the throne of your life. He says, I want you to love me. That's still a prerequisite. We got folks talking about church, but do you love Jesus? We got, we got preachers talking about preaching, but do you love Jesus? <laughs> Deacons, deacon, but do you love Jesus? Ministry leaders leading, but do you love Jesus? Church members tithing, but do you love Jesus? Hallelujah. Jesus is the essential. Watch this. As we come down to this, watch this. Listen here, church, and hear me well. As we come down these last minutes, uh, the prerequisite on this communion Sunday, because this is communion Sunday, and we are doing a heart check. Do I, do I truly love the Lord? Do I love religion? Do I love, do I love ceremonies? Do I love good singing? Do I love good preaching? Do I love doing ministry, but do I really, really, really love the Lord? Listen, loving the Lord, walk with me this evening, this morning. Loving the Lord is, is a new birth thing. It's a new birth thing, amen? See, see, loving the Lord is a new birth Holy Spirit thing. Hold on to your seats. Let me, let me give you a little bit of theology here. Watch this. You can't love the Lord in your flesh. There's no way that you can pull off loving the Lord in your own strength. You can't do it. There's no way you can love the Lord in your own flesh. No, 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 no. God has to do it in us. You got to walk with me today. See, God has to do it in you and I. He has to manufacture the love in our hearts. God is the one who will give us 
the love that we need to love him in return. It's God's love. You got to remember something. God is love. God is a very personification of love. All this out here about we love, watch this, apart from God, there is no love. God is the one who has to manifest love in you and I for you and I to reciprocate love back to him. You say, where you get that from? Well, I get it from the book. Because in Romans 5, 5, it says, and hope does not put us to shame. Walk with me this evening. I feel like preaching. Been going for four weeks. Amen. Because God's love has been poured, where? Out in our hearts. God says, I'm the one who poured love in your heart in order for you to love me in return. Watch this. If I never pour my love when you gave your life to me, new birth gives you the love of God. Spiritual regeneration gives you the love of God. Repentance from your sin gives you the love of God. He says, now, I poured in your heart through the Holy Spirit. Did y'all see that? He says that, watch this. He says, I had to give you love in order for you to love me. We got some folks trying to love. You can't love God apart from him. No, no, you can't love God apart from him. God says, no, no, I got to pour love in your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. And watch this. That comes the moment that you recognize you're a sinner. That comes the moment that you bow your knee and you cry out to the Lord Almighty. The love of God is poured in your heart. We see that. That love comes from God. Can I get a witness up in here? Uh, love. God says, I pour love all up in your heart. And watch this. We could never love God. If he didn't first love us. Let me say that again. You can never love God if he didn't first love us. That's what 1 John says. 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because, watch, because he first loved us. I'm so thankful this morning that the Lord loved me. I'm so thankful that he loved you. I'm so thankful that he first loved us. I'm so thankful that it wasn't predicated on me first loving him. Because if it was predicated on me first loving him, he would have never got my love. But it's predicated on him first loving us. Isn't that a witness? Watch this. And, and, and as we look at this, watch this. And, and, and because of this love of God towards us, because of this love that God has towards us, the love that God pours in our heart, watch this, he becomes the priority. Jesus becomes the priority. Jesus becomes the first priority. Why? Because of the love of God that has been poured in my heart. That now, watch this, he's the man. That now, watch this, I bow to him. Now I worship him. Now he is the one that has my affection. Amen. He is the one because he first loved us. And now the love that I have for the Lord because he first loved me. Watch this. It don't sit around talking about I love the Lord. Now watch this, brothers and sisters. Love now springs into action. Amen. Love now, it goes into an action. And, and because he loved me, now it's a love that seeks God's fellowship. Because he loves me, I I want to hang around him because I love him. I can't understand folks that can't hang around the church, hang around the things of God. No, I want to be around him. It's a love that seeks God's fellowship. Psalm that says, as a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. Now, watch this. I want to be, I want to be in your presence, Lord. We was in the presence this morning, First Lady and I, we was in the presence of a holy God. We spent time just, just basking in, in his radiance, amen? Why? Because of my love now springs into action. And I recognize, watch this, I recognize something that nobody can do me better than Jesus. I recognize that. And it's a love, watch this, that now loves God's word. Now, because my love springs into action, amen, then talking about church and talking about I love the Lord, now my love shows now forth when I get in that word. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. That's some love story stuff right there. Amen. That's, that's in love stuff right there. Amen. And, and, and then it's a love that hates evil. It's a love that now hates what the Lord hates because he hates it and I love him. I hate it. Amen. Let those who love the Lord hate evil for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. What are we talking about? We're talking about a love now that is real. We're talking about a love that springs into action. 
We're talking about what Jesus tells them. He said, to love the Lord thy God. What does it mean to love the Lord thy God? It's to make him the priority. It's to be in love with him. It's to honor him, to worship him, to fellowship with him, to get in his word, to hate evil like he hates evil. That's what the love of God is. And it's a love that rejects the world, but, re but accepts him. It's a love that rejects. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Watch this. It loves him more than it does this evil and corrupt world. Why? Because we know that we're going to leave from this place soon and very soon, and we're going to be in this presence. Amen. And watch this. And we reject this world's corruption, and we cling to our God's righteousness. It's a love that obeys it's a love that now obeys him because watch this. When you love someone, can I get a witness up in here? You want to please them. When you love somebody, you want to please them. And Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Did you see that? What are we talking about as we get ready to close? We're talking about a love of God that springs in that. What are we talking about in this communion? You got to love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Watch this. Don't talk about, watch this. Don't talk about church and don't talk about ministry. Don't talk about all this stuff if you don't love him. Don't talk about loving people when we first don't love him. We got to love the Lord. That is still the prerequisite. If you want to walk on streets of gold, the question is, do you love him? Do you love him? He's the king. Amen. Let me close with this one point. You got to see this as we close. God is not just looking for folks who just say they love him. Amen? And on the outside. But the Lord is looking for folks who truly love him on the inside. Amen? See, he's saying, because if you just love me on the outside, you just like to talk about me, about how you love me, but you don't truly love me on the inside, watch what this is called. This is called having a form of godliness. But you're denying the power thereof. You got a form of godliness. Oh, you know the right talk. You, you was raised up in church. You know how to say the right stuff. You've been around church folks. You, you know how to do ministry. You, you, you got a little hoop in you. You even know how to preach. Or you got a little bit of, uh, uh, of teaching ability in you. But watch this. But the, the question is, on the inside of your heart, do you truly love me? Do you love me? Amen. And, you know, as we look at this, we close to the last point. Uh, Jesus asked Peter, you know, when he came to Peter, Jesus is something because this is where we got to get to. Jesus knows immense words. Jesus is bold. After his resurrection, he meets um, um, Peter up on the shore. Amen. Over in the book of John. And this is what he says to Peter. What? Listen to what Jesus says to Peter to, 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 to bring a drawstring to this message. Watch this. Jesus says this to Peter. He looks Peter straight in the eye. And he says to Peter this, do you love me? That's what he had. He ain't go around. He, he ain't say nothing about it. He ain't say, do you love church? Or do you love ministry? And you, got, you should love all those things. But before you can do those things, do you love me? And then that's what he said to Peter. Well, if you love me, go feed my sheep. What? If you love me, just don't talk about how you love me. If you love me, now put it into action. Go feed my sheep. As we go, the prerequisite is still on the table, brothers and sisters. The prerequisite is still on the table. You must love the Lord. You must love the Lord. We're in a world today that's so much pragmatism and, and so much being liberal that, watch this, that we're getting away from this about loving the Lord. You got to love Jesus, Amen. Uh, man of God, you got to love the Lord. Woman of God, you got to love the Lord. Young person, you have to love the Lord. That is still the prerequisite. And we're getting away from this, amen, that it's still on the table. We have to love the Lord. Don't talk about eternal life if you don't love the Lord. Don't talk about heaven if you don't love the Lord. Don't talk about my Savior if you don't love the Lord, amen. The apostle Paul gives us this great truth as we close with the last verse. He says, if anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be a curse. Woo! 
Lord, you, look what he says in the word of God. If, if you don't love the Lord, he says you are cursed. If you don't, because those who love the Lord, they're looking for his return. Those who love the Lord, they're waiting for him. Those who love the Lord, they're occupying until he comes. Those who love the Lord, they're seeking him. He says, if you don't love the Lord, you become a curse. Why? And the curse that he's talking about, watch this. The curse is that you're still under the curse of the law. You're still under the curse of sin. You're still under the curse. Why? Because if you don't love him, you're still under the curse. Your sin separates you from him because you're still under the curse. And so love, he says, if you don't love him, you're still under the curse. And I don't know if you're like me. At times, I'm saved and born again, but at times, I don't love him like I should. Is anybody in the house like that? Is anybody in the house? We, we love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, but sometimes I don't love you like I should love you. I don't, I don't care for you like I, like I should care for you. And, and, and is anybody else like me? Amen. Uh, I'm saved and I'm on my way to, to glory, but Lord, I, 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 I can love you a little bit more. I can caress you a little bit more. I could be in love with you a little bit more because there's a difference of saying I love and being in love and, and I could be in love with you a little bit more, Lord. Help me. Forgive me. Is anybody in the house right now where you're at that can testify? You ain't ashamed to say, Lord, I can love you a little bit more. I could be a little bit more closer to you. I can, I can fellowship more with you. I can seek you more, Lord. Have mercy on me and I ask for forgiveness. Anybody in the house, right where you at during this whole year of pandemic, we've been looking at everything in the world, but the Lord says, do you love me? And watch this, Lord, forgive me because I can love you more. I can love you more and I ask for your forgiveness. And I ask that you, God, the Holy Spirit, will enable me and that you would strengthen me and that you would refocus me. <laughs> To love you more and as i go into 2021 i want to love you more because you first loved me you you commended your love towards me while i was a sinner you loved me and lord god i want to put my love for you into action more than just preaching and pastoring Ah, no i love those things i love preaching to your people and pastoring but lord i gotta love you more i gotta love you first help me lord there's anybody in the house right where you are just lift up a hand and say, Lord, help me. Have mercy. Have mercy. But on the other hand, watch this. You're not born again. And you recognize that you don't love God. And because of that, watch this. Please listen. And because of that, your sin has separated you from God's saving love. And you need his love. Watch this. Watch this, brother. Sister. Watch this. You need his love. You need his forgiveness. And you need his redemption. And I recognize I don't love God for that unbeliever. I don't love God. But I recognize today, today I recognize that I need him. I recognize that he loved me. I recognize that he gave his life for me. I recognize that he sacrificed himself for me. And, and today, watch this, I recognize that he's my savior. And I asked him to pour his love into my heart. So I will never be disappointed. I will never be ashamed. Lord, love me with your everlasting love. And I accept your love today. If that's you, if that's you, watch this. Because the prerequisite on the table is that we love the Lord. And if that's you today, call on the name of the Lord and thou shalt be saved. If that's you today, say, Lord, save me right now. Right where I am, Lord, pour your love in my heart. Open up my blind eyes to receive you as my personal savior yes lord i want to love you lord and i thank you lord i thank you lord for speaking to my heart and to my spirit and i thank you for making me a brand new creation is there one in there for the bible says god so loved the world that he gave action his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life and if that's you today I stop by to let you know that you're a child of God and that the love of God is in you because of this new birth that's taking place in your life today. And that's you today. I want you to go to that number on the screen. I want you to call that number. And I want you to tell that person on the other end, today the love of God has been poured in my heart. 
and now there's a love that was never there before, a love for God. I don't know about you, but I remember when he saved my soul. I remember, and the love of God was poured in my heart. And when he poured the love in my heart, the scales dropped from my eyes. No longer in bondage to sin. Who the Son set free is truly free indeed. Remember, rooted Bible, the prerequisite is still on the table. <laughs> don't get caught up so much in the church and, and everybody else. If you don't first love the Lord, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. May God bless you and may heaven richly smile upon you.